Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about Category 4 Ida making landfall with all the impacts and major flooding well inland in the days ahead. Plus, next weekend, we could be possibly looking at another storm in the Gulf of Mexico. How are you doing everyone? This is your Sunday afternoon update. Uh, first of all, I've been getting a lot of comments in the news feed saying, hey, uh, I've been missing a couple of your videos. You haven't dropped one lately, or I don't get notified any longer. First of all, it's it's free to subscribe to the channel. So YouTube, if it says subscribe, but it's free. All you have to do is click the button, and you can join the you know subscribe to the channel. And then plus, if you want to get notified, there's an option where there's a little bell. You click on that bell, and you can actually move it to all. So once you move it to all, that basically tells YouTube that you're gonna get notified every time I drop a video, which is literally on a daily basis. I do a, a, a daily update seven days a week, sometimes two a day. Uh, I know in July alone, I dropped 38 videos. So I do a lot of content. And there's not weather events that I miss out on. Uh, I gave you well advanced notice on this particular storm. And now that it's making landfall, and this is a very serious uh, situation, we talked about this storm well in advance of this having the potential to be a major, if not almost category five hurricane. It was just a tropical storm three days ago and it really ramped up into a major hurricane overnight. It literally dropped 40 millibars in 12 hours in the Gulf of Mexico. Only two storms in recorded history. Hurricane Allen back in 1980 and then Hurricane Rita in 2005 were able to do that. So this is in a rare territory that Ida was in last night and it made landfall uh, down in uh, at 11.55 a.m. south near uh, the Port uh, for, for Sean area by uh, Grand, Grand Isles as 150 mile per hour uh, major category four hurricane at 930 millibars. So it was at the lowest millibar right at landfall. So it literally intensified all the way up to landfall. If you recall, Laura last year came at 937 millibar, okay? Uh, Katrina came in at 920. So this is a very dangerous system. It's already producing 6.4 feet uh, storm surge and uh, Shell Beach. Um, uh, Grand Isles had a wind gust of 140 miles an hour before the wind gauge broke. And it's literally making a major impact. It's almost worst case scenario how this unfolded uh, overnight with a deepening catastrophic storm uh, making landfall. So let's move forward and show you, man, this is just an ominous sight, guys. I mean, I, this is just not a pretty sight. I mean, there's going to be numerous impacts in the days and weeks ahead, if not months, as uh, people scramble to try to put their lives back together. It's making a huge impact, and it's got you know serious inland flooding and well impacts well inland. There's the eye, and it crossed about 11.55 a.m. near near the uh, Grand Isles area. So let's let's zoom in what the radar actually looked like at that time at 11:55. There's the actual eye. So basically, these went once a more than half of the center actually crosses land. That's technically when the official point is is when they call it uh, a, a landfall. And there's Grand Isles getting raked in that right front quadrant, and it's moving northwest at 13 miles an hour, and it, it was shifting, slightly shifting further east uh, just in the last day. So this track has shifted a little bit further east. There's there's Homa here. So the, the, the center of it's just going to cross just to the right of Homa. But don't get dead set on the exact cone of this system because there's impacts well widespread. Remember, a lot of the heavier rain, a lot of the higher impacts are going to be in the right front quadrant of the storm. So even if, as this continues to lift up, there's uh, here's, here's uh, New Orleans right here. So New Orleans is going to get major impacts from this system with extensive with the extensive flooding as this continues to press northward. So uh, the, the seriousness of the storm has not even came came to fruition yet as th this is just now coming ashore as we speak. And it's, it's actually slowed down from 16 to 13 miles an hour. And I'll kind of show you the reason uh, why that why that is. So here's the setup currently. It's moving northwest at 13 miles an hour. 
It's got official winds at 150 miles an hour. It's moving northwest right now, but it's expect to make the northeast turn and remain a hurricane, finally drop down to a category one hurricane by probably sometime uh, tomorrow morning and then a tropical storm but we're going to have impacts well inland with from this system all the way up into mississippi and alabama getting into tennessee going into kentucky it's going to be over kentucky by the time of wednesday morning rolls around then it's going to spread all the way into virginia and west virginia and still a tropical depression even over in new jersey so you're going to be getting impacts uh by thursday morning into the northeast from uh, Ida. And then once it gets off the coast, there are strong indications that it's possibly gonna be reforming again and become Ida again as a tropical storm just south of Maine by the time on Friday morning. So we're talking a lot of impacts, not just along the coast, but well inland all week long from Ida with a huge threat but in the interim, they're going to have to be dealing with that massive storm surge coming, uh, coming, coming ashore during peak storm surge through Lore. It got up to 13 feet. Right now, they're estimated 12 to 16 feet. So Lore, lowest millibars was 9.37. Ida was 9.30, and, and so we're talking potentially higher storm surge than that. Once you get into like Katrina range, they had a 28 foot storm surge to kind of give you an idea their millibar was at 920 when it came ashore Ida is at 930 so you can kind of see where potential peak storm surge could be it could be possibly in the 16 to 20 foot range uh, it's unknown but we're talking that's over your house guys any more that's why they had mandatory evacuations for all those areas down for down south was very critical with this extensive flooding. So the reason why this thing is actually slowing down a little bit is we've got two high pressures. And once it's coming inland, that's is what steered Ida from uh, going going into uh, inland as you know, currently is we got this high, pr high pressure over the Southeast coast, which is more or less, you know, pushing it. And then we also have another uh, high pressure out here into the West. So it's almost kind of trapped in a way Right now it's moving northwest, but once this one relaxes, then it's going to start moving uh, north northeastward. But that's unfortunately is going to be able to slow down at least the system somewhat, and that's why we have extensive flooding and the power outages are going to go well inland. So we're talking widespread anywhere in the purple shaded area of Grand Isles to New Orleans to Baton Rouge. Once the power goes out at your house, we're talking not just days, probably weeks of it going to be out so we're talking you know long-term effects from from ida with catastrophic damage and when threat uh, those power outages go from baton rouge to hattiesburg all the way to jackson and then even extending well northward into possibly into memphis into tupelo so we're talking of extensive area real estate could potentially be out of power for uh you know days if not weeks to come uh from the impacts from ida so as we move forward yes the the, the rain threat the, the flooding threat is another serious threat so compounding on top of the potential 12 to 16 foot storm surge then we have all that rain that's going to be pushed to sh pushed inland we're talking extensive flooding into new orleans anywhere up to you know, 12, 18, all the way up to possibly 24 inches. We're talking two feet of rain in isolated spots in these areas down in the south. And then even well inland from uh, even into uh, portions of Jackson and the Mobile going into Memphis. I mean, easily possibly double digit rainfall. And this will extend well inland into Nashville going into Cincinnati. You can see as this sh as this system continues lifting off into the northeast, Inland, uh, inland flooding will be a huge threat uh, from Ida, and it goes, like I showed you, all the way up into the northeast coast, up until Maine, all the way through Friday. So let's expand the view and take you back out to, uh, to the Atlantic and show you what's going on, because there is a lot. I mean, there's Ida uh, coming to the shore. We've got Nora here that's going to be impacting parts of Cabo, basically a lot of flooding for parts of Mexico down here on the coast. 
Uh, man, we got Julian that just formed out here. We have several other systems, but we also have a system that's actually not even marked by the National Hurricane Center currently right now. But this is actually our next concern, at least of mine currently right now, is this system down here, right down in the Caribbean, it doesn't look like much right now. And that's probably why the NHC doesn't have a mark on it because uh, it still hasn't shown signs of coming together. But a lot of the model guidance shows it does as this would continue lifting off into the Northwest into Yucatan. And this area disturbed weather could possibly enter back into the Gulf of Mexico sometime, we're talking late next weekend, we're talking possibly six, seven days away, it might another tropical type entity could start entering uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. So let's let's move forward and show you what's happening. Like I said, it's really busy. There's Ida, there's another little system, gives a 20% chance of possibly forming off the, uh, the Virginia coast here. Uh, there's Julian that just formed uh, yesterday or like, I know it, it actually formed today, but it's gonna be a fish storm. This is not gonna be a land impact. We have a, a tropical depression 10. So we're right on the cusp of this naming to be a storm as well. If it does, it'll be Kate. And then we have a very strong African uh, wave that's coming off here. That's gonna be moving off into the West and Northwest that a lot of the model guide it shows it's really trying to get its act together. While again, it's not even highlighted by the NHC, but this is my area of concern right here, down here in the Caribbean again, a possible tropical, slow tropical development all next week. So let's move forward and take a look at the overall EPS guidance moving forward. There's Ida showing you that curve with a lot of inland flooding well off into the Northeast. And then we have, there's Julian going out to sea. There's uh, possibly Kate. That's if it does get named a storm, it'll be just named a storm and not really do much of anything. And there's the, uh, the African wave that comes off the coast. So if Kate actually forms, uh, I think this one will be Larry. <laughs> so then you got Larry forming uh, and this one's the models are really bullish right i mean we got you know some of these some of these guidance shows it taken to not not only just a hurricane but potentially a, a major hurricane but it's well out to sea we got so plenty of time to track this one but this is the area of concern that the eps guidance is starting to show we got some spaghetti member models uh ensemble members models showing hey we got some concentrated center here and this could possibly lift into the gulf of mexico so if we look look at uh the eps guidance by that wednesday time frame we've got about a 40 to 50 percent chance of some sort of slow development to a tropical type entity and so by the time we get into possibly next saturday this could start going into the Western Gulf of Mexico, and it's way too early to tell you know, where it goes from there. But yes, I am looking at potentially another tropical system as I do feel it's gonna continue to remain active from now through like say September 10th timeframe. And then we're gonna go into a little bit of a lull. So we'll have about a two week lag where we're gonna have to get a little respite and we're, we're, we're all this is gonna go away and we're gonna be able to uh, have a little calm, right? Uh, but, but between now and then, we're, we're going to have to be dealing with these tropical systems coming up. But this is my main concern, at least for land impacts potentially from, from the United States, is this little system down here uh, into the Caribbean. So um, as we move forward and kind of zoom into that feature, yeah, there's more and more ensemble members showing it could try to get its act together and start entering uh, the, the Gulf of Mexico by the time we get into uh, late next week and get into early the, the following week. So this puts it through September the 8th timeframe. So I'm definitely looking at something trying to develop into the Gulf as we get into late next weekend. But man, look at the rain prospects of where, what Ida is gonna bring with almost double digit rainfall, if not upward to 20 inches i mean we're just talking catastrophic damage i mean yes you can only imagine you know the damage that laura did and we're talking potentially more damage than what laura brought into in those places currently right now but man inland flooding is going to be a serious threat not just along the coast 
but we're talking anywhere in these white shaded areas. Yes, I mean, inland, all the way up to Mississippi and uh, parts of Tennessee, parts of Kentucky, going into Virginia, into Pennsylvania, start getting double digit rainfall over the next you know four or five days from Ida. This is inland flooding, goes all the way into Jersey, into, into Massachusetts, getting it on the outskirts of Maine here. So that we have a lot of uh, impacts. There's the impacts from Nor. Not much, too much in uh, Cabo uh, with basically wind, but a lot of the heavier rain will be in Mexico, but it's going to be spreading rain well uh, inland into parts of the Four Corners region uh, for, for there. But man, so yeah, so definitely uh, Ida has now officially come to, come to shore. So that's a good thing. It can't get any stronger at least. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.